So I was never really curious about the stars or the solar system or any of these things. In fact, I was more curious about uh, collecting WWE or cricket cards, the trump cards, or there used to be these little things called uh, Tazos that came with uh, lace chips. Yeah, and I don't know why I really wanted to have them. So I was kind of more curious about these things than I ever was about the stars or the sky or anything like this until there used to be times where um, there used to be a park cut or I think even in general, uh, we just used to go and sit on top of the terrace or lie down and just keep looking at the stars. I, I don't know why we don't do that as much these days. So when I used to do that, uh, it was a really long time ago, about when I was in fourth standard or fifth, I think, when my dad asked me, or rather he just pointed to the stars because I usually point at the stars and I go like, you know, wow, look at those three, they are together. And I keep doing these things. And once he just told me very offhand that, you know, do you know what? When you're looking at those stars, one of them that you're seeing right now may not even be alive. It might have already died. Now for me, that was extremely interesting because how could that be possible? I'm seeing it right now. And even the concept of a star being able to die was very, very new to me. And I got, started looking up and I asked, what? And he told me that, you know, the star that's over there really begins to start. The light from there takes some time to reach you. And for once, I was actually beginning to get really curious about what he was trying to tell me. Then he told me also that, uh, for example, the light from the sun itself takes about eight minutes to reach you. So then I asked, so if we switch off the sun and through some way, we wouldn't be able to know for another eight minutes and about 20 seconds. And he was like, yeah, you wouldn't know. Right? So after the sun is off, so if the sun leaves out a light, it takes about eight minutes to reach us. Now, this one thing changed the way I was looking at the world forever. Like, till then, it had been a very simple world for me. I would look around and I would go like, you know, wow, it's there, I'm seeing it. But now it became like something has to leave from there and reach me and it takes some time. It just changed the way I was looking at every little thing around me because then I looked up and I thought, I stopped imagining there to be a star, but I, I was imagining a ray that had started long, long ago, right? Some kind of a light and that was like making its journey towards me and some of them have reached me yet. The ones they reach me, once they reach me is when I see them. So then I also asked, does that also mean that there are stars that we haven't even seen yet? Say, this, there could be a star that's born right now in a blank space that seems blank to us because when the star was, it's born some, some years ago, but the light hasn't yet reached us. Now, this was crazy for me because it got me really, really curious about what lies beyond there. And for a while after that, maybe in 6th and 7th and 8th, and I, I just had to pick up every book that had the word the universe in it. It could be anything. There was a book called The Endless Universe, I think. There was another book um, which is a little bit about the stars, a little bit about constellations. Most of these were talking about what the universe is on a large scale. And I began to start devouring more and more, more of these books because that little spark that it ignited, had got me incredibly curious about this. Because when I thought back and thought, when did I exactly get curious? So it, to know that it all began with just looking up and realizing that something that you see today might already be dead and you'll not know for years and years and years, maybe sometimes millions of years, or a blank space that you see today has a star, but you'll never know for another 100,000 years or maybe I don't know how many years. So this also got me to understand that once distances become really, really large, the distances between two stars, the speed of light just isn't fast enough to be taken to be infinite, right? Somewhere in the room, you'll just think of light as infinitely fast. You don't really need to care about how fast light travels because light travels so fast that it's almost instantaneous as, as long as the distances are this small. But even with just the sun and the earth, which if you take the a look at the global scale, right? Or rather in this word, in this, in this case, the better way to put it is the scale of the universe. It's a very small distance. The sun and the earth are so close together. If you think about some distances like the size of galaxies, we'll talk about them. So what we realize is that if you take distance between two stars, the speed of light just cannot be approximated to be infinity. It does have a finite speed. It does take some time. It might take some appreciable time to go and reach here. The approximate speed of light is about 3 into 10 to the power of 8 kilometers every second. Now, in order to wrap your head around that, yeah, how much is a kilometer? Think of some distance that you know as a kilometer and then multiply that by about 3 lakh, yeah, approximately. Yeah, and then, then start thinking that much in a second. As good as instantaneous, right? But even then, light takes 8 minutes to reach from the sun to the earth. But when you look at distances that are really, really large, then even a light minute won't survive. Yeah, Light sometimes takes years and years, not just 8 minutes. So a very new unit of distance can come up for us. Right? So if I were to tell you, light takes, in a minute, it travels this much. 
right? Then how much will it travel in a year? Then what would you do? You would calculate how many minutes are there in an hour, then how many hours are there in a day, and how many days are there in a month, and then how many months are there in a year. Now I can't take my hands beyond anymore because it's extremely large. In fact, light travels approximately a foot for every nanosecond. That's a very, very, very small number, right? Nanosecond is one by ten followed by nine zeros of a second. In that little time, light travels a foot. So then, how much does light travel in a year? Could you calculate that? Now that distance is a very useful distance to talk about space. In the scale of spaces, it's a much better distance. If you were to talk about it in meters, you would say, you know, five zero 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 zero. It just go too 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 big. In the scale of the stars, if you were to talk in something like meters or kilometers, it would just be too 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 big. Numbers which like fifty zeros or sixty zeros added to them just doesn't make any sense. So you start talking about them in this new way called a light year. Now usually a year is a unit of a time, right? How many years since you were born, or how many years are you going to take to do this? But a light year is a unit of a distance.